He said, he said what have you had? He went, I've had meth. I've had marijuana. I had mushrooms. And he had something else. How can you not have Nico Hines in your origin team? Where are you going to play He's him? been the best player in the comp again this year. Oh, OK, where are you going to play him? I don't think it had anything to do with the fact it was Victor, but I think uh, they saw a bloke who was injured on the ground. It was heavy contact. Jets, we're back. You ready to rock? Ready to go. I'm always ready to rock. Here we go. Oh! Gets Victor, the inflictor! Get an ambulance. <laughs> Get an ambulance. <laughs> Boom. Right off his stomach. Straight off his melon. Oh, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> With a long range shot, the arm's up. It's a point. He was one of the great guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> Freddie in the eighth time again looking at round nine of the competition. How good was Anzac round? What a fabulous round of footy. It was the round that we thought was never going to end. It lasted for five days, but being out at Allianz yesterday, how good. Welcome, boys. The awesome. best. The awesome. Best. The weather was fantastic too. The whole lot. Conditions were incredible. It was great the crowd when the dragon started to come back. Then mm. you actually got to feel what the stadium could really there. deliver. Yeah, oh, quite for a long time. They were pretty convincing. The Roosters. Mm. Want to uh, say thanks and acknowledge our um, armed forces over the, the Anzac Round. Mm. I know the rugby league does a great job of celebrating Anzac Round, but without the people from our armed forces that that helped to mark the occasion, it wouldn't be anywhere near as special as it is. And yesterday that. So moving. We'll talk about the game, but but the pre the pre match commemorations they were they were really um, moving and emotional, and of course the new ground makes it all the more. They do it so well. Yeah, do it so well. Actually, the pre game, the army versus the fire. Yeah, fire brigade. Don't they rip in? Oh, they're mad. Oh, they're mad, and they're not fit either. So <laughs> you see, his fatigue settles in. It's oh, they just a bit bash dangerous. Each other. So from one interesting sporting event to another, Live Golf over the last weekend in South Australia, they had the party hole where they're just ripping in for days upon days. Yeah. And they get a hole in one. Now, it's Brooks Kepka's brother, Chase Kepka. We'll have a look at the hole in one in a minute, but that, that's good. I mean, that, that's the interaction you don't really get with the PGA Tour. Well, it's a different crowd. It's yeah. not the elite. Golfing can be... A very elite sport, and there's certain uh, golf courses where you got to be very successful to play. Well, I don't the members know. Wouldn't be reacting I don't very think, well the, the, I don't think the members of the Australian would like that one. No. Royal but Sydney. Bring a different demographic to the golf. Mm. Different people. Happy Gilmore like. I understand. It was very a, Happy Gilmore. Mm. No, <laughs> no. I understand. There's a member actually of the Wobbler Sports team that might have got kicked out over there, enjoying the hospitality. But Murray. Much. Yeah. Really? Went very hard, they say. How could you get kicked out? Did you get kicked out? Right. You didn't see the scenes? You got kicked out of there. You have to be going. Mate, say, no, what have well. you done? <laughs> you won't have a job here next week either, by the sounds of it. That's scurrilous. He didn't get kicked out, but he did have a good time. Yesterday's hero. Now, I've asked them to up the ante and the difficulty. I think it's got easier this week. We'll leave the boys' mics on. Let's have a look, see if they can work out who scored this try. It should Lisa. be a no-brainer. Oh, you can tell now. From the home good. Side. Good. This is tackle no, number five. No, it's not. No, it's Shackle not. Shackle is their go-to man. Girdler decides the blind side is the option. <laughs> Wise from out of nowhere. To oh, what's he played for Parramatta? It looked to be the wrong oh. option. He had an injury. No, he had a bad run with injuries. What's his name? Sandy coloured hair. We might have got him. Woods. Woods. No. No. I was thinking uh, the bloke who played for Cronulla, the winger. He's actually a pastor. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't. Where's their go-to man? Girdler decides the blind side Oh, we've got option. him. Luke Lewis. Luke Lewis. It's Luke Lewis. He's from out of nowhere. Well, he looks very different. Is that the same now. person? Yeah, he doesn't look like that now. 324 games. What a mighty player. 16 tests. 17 origins. Now, what he won gun. the Clive Churchill medal in 2016, so he won his first comp back in 2003. 13 years later, wins the Clive Churchill medal in a premiership. Yeah, Playing like for who won it in 16? Sharkies. Sharkies. Oh, Sharks, yeah. What a gun. Wing. What a gun and went from wing. To centre. To back row. To back row. Mm. And we see him at the footy every weekend. He's part of the team at the ABC and just ripped. Yeah. He is he's, big. Got, he's got to get a hobby because his yeah. hobby looks like doing weights. One of us got to be, yeah, he's got to run. He's got to he's walk. He's a champion bloke, Luke Lewis. We salute you. We've got you. 
I can't believe it. Well, it's a different Luke Lewis. It is, that's why. No. It looked like David Woods. It was an old game of him playing the other night. Who's the player I'm like. thinking of? I don't know the one you're talking about. He was a winger. So, went to where? From went from, from Cronulla to Penrith. He and was a winger. He's, he's Allen. No. no, no, he's a priest now. Pastor. He's like a pastor. Lovely fella. Not Paul Fatawira. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, he's he from, Bris- he's from Brisbane. He came down with Johnny Ling. Did he really? You know when Johnny Ling were all the, the Queensland young blokes? Oh. Well, I might be making that up as usual. <laughs> well done. Um, boys... We have got an entry into the weirdest rugby league events Hall of Fame. Can somebody explain to me what Robert Jennings was doing here? Well, this is this is called panic. This is called white line fever. Have you seen anything so bizarre in your life, Robert? <laughs> Get up and put the ball down. So Nicarima behind you. He's half a metre short. Look, what was he thinking? Look at Nicarima. What's he doing? What's Nicarima? Even, even <laughs> Ray. You haven't got Ray Stone talking. If you show that again, I've never heard Ray Stone's talk. He just looks straight through you. Even Ray's count. Get up and run. What? You watch Ray Stone in Jersey. Is he four, 16? 16. You watch Ray. I can't, I st- hey, I, what get is up. going on? Get up. <laughs> Well, you know what? Ray wasn't talking. He was only moving his hands. Oh, yeah. Ray should have been talking. Ray Stone would be a good baddie in a movie. So Wayne Bennett said he's just had a brain explosion. Go, go. To state the bleeding obvious. What, what's going through he thought, his head? Be a, he thought it was going to be a double movement. But you've got to have someone within 10 metres of you for it to well, be a double Well, someone's going to touch you. <laughs> like, he could have rolled. Roll, roll. <laughs> oh, that was and, and they won. And they won. And do you know what? He got the ball in the... Oh, mightn't have been the next set. It was... A few minutes after, knocked it on. Over the line. Over the line. Yeah. And oh. then he scored a try. He scored, oh. he scored the, did he put, score the try that put them in front? It might have been. He did. Oh. What a funny old I'm game he had. I'm trying to find had. out who this guy is, the pastor. All right. Um, um, bad, no, really? David someone. David Simmons. Who? David Simmons. You got it, oh, Freddie. David Simmons. Good player. Was, was a pastor. good player. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of the show, David Simmons, <laughs> Pastor David Simmons. Now, we oh, asked for our, our viewer show. questions. <laughs> we, we have so many viewer questions that were submitted. Thank you very much to everyone help who me submitted Rhonda, them. Help, help me, Rhonda. Help me, David. Help, <laughs> help me, David. We did have to vet some of the questions. OK, go. Yeah, I could imagine. Pedro Pig is our first cub off the rank. Who do you reckon the best player to never win a premiership is? Good question. I got Benny a lot. Benny, yeah. Benny changed the way dummy halves play. It was the first dummy half he got out with skill and kicked the ball. Now, I wasn't sure if Steve Rogers won a grand final for the Dragons. He didn't? didn't? Hindy? Everyone laughs about Hindy. Well, Andrew Eddinghausen's the one everyone talks about. E.T.? Well, you think of all those Tigers. Blocker, Mm. Ciro, Mm. Benny. Gary Jack. Gee, don't bring it up to him, though. It still hurts. E.T., Steve Rogers, Hindy. Chaos. Question two. What was your favourite fast no, food takeaway to eat after a game late at night? Funny enough, I didn't eat much after a game. Mm. A few schooners? A oh. few drinks? Different world, man. Yeah. Eat some schooners. Normally, well, it normally end up a kebab. <laughs> late night kebab. How good's a three o'clock kebab? Not good. Not good at all. Yeah, I, d- I wasn't much of an eater either. <laughs> no. You see the see the pizzas in the sheds now. Yeah. Yeah. I would have gone for the pizza. And the grilled. Someone sponsored off grilled. Now they bring in a, just a whole heap of food after. Macca's. Yeah. Good people at Macca's. Macca's, yeah. Boys, it should, it should oh, be my go-to sometimes because the nightclub King Street, uh, Pink Street, <laughs> oh. was opposite McDonald's. So I'd have uh, just my two. Two junior burgers and small fries. That's all you ate. <laughs> now, that was my go-to meal. If I'm hungry and drive past Maccas, right. I have two junior burgers and small fries. Oh, I, I was fries on there. Oh, there, yeah, that's always good. Cheeseburger, fries, McFlurry. I've never Chocolate. had a McFlurry. Never had one. Haven't you? No. Chocolate shake. Savory type of guy. King Street. Yeah. Love it. That's Hager was King Street. Street. Oh yes. Yeah. Fanny's Hager was Fanny's. Oh. I hide out Fanny's for my fortieth. Did you? Yeah. We used to go from Penrith and just stay there the whole night. I bet you did. <laughs> we used to love Newcastle. You hide at a nightclub for your 40th. Yeah. Most people most people go to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday, um, 
The Thursday, what we're talking about. Fanny's. Fanny's, Fanny's still open. Yeah, it's called the Argyle. Russell Richardson owns it. Yeah, right. He played for the... See, he owned the other one. Didn't he own the other one, I thought, across... He, he owned King Street, too. Yeah. And he owns the, the Cambridge now, up there, which I'll, is a lot. I'll tell you the best place. What was the pub call that used to open early? That's nuts. Behind, right near where you're talking about Russell Richardson owned? Yeah. No, there was... Is it the Empire? Oh, the Empire. <laughs> that was like Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> so after the 97 Grand Final, mm. that's the only place it was open. Obviously, it's an early opener. Yeah. And just the people of the night and sailors and degenerates go there. So the last two standing of the 97 Grand Final were Paul Harrigan and Mark Hughes. Now, Chief fell asleep in the corner and no one was game enough to wake him. So Boozy just sat with him, leaned up against him and drank <laughs> for a couple of hours. And then... Um, I think Boozy got him with the bouncers and carried him out. <laughs> Chief got a standing applause at the Empire. That was the best. Yeah. We used to stay in that hotel that was right travel, next to it. The Travel Lodge. Travel Lodge. Stay there, go out, go to the Empire. And? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. You two are reliving your, <laughs> reliving your careers and your upbringings. Newcastle okay. so how, much fun. How long has you have been to a nightclub? Oh. I can't remember the last time I went to a nightclub. Me and you, England. England, yeah. What was that called again? The church? No, no, no. No, no, no. We... Was it Tiger Tiger or something? Oh, no. Well, the other one, the uh, Mallee Bar. Remember that Irish oh, night? yes. That was what funny. Happened? What happened that night? Don't know. That was just funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember laughing a lot. We done? Dancing. Bit of dancing. Dancing. Very good. Uh, I don't think either team would have had the energy to dance after Anzac Day. Ooh, mm. two big games. Let's take all the ceremony out of it. Well, the actual game. Yeah. My goodness. Sensational. Roosters should have been in front by 30 for our for the game we did. Um, they were in some. They were in control. I've got to say, the Dragons, Jack Bird especially. Geez, they hit hard. They mm. just go so hard. Don't there they? was some contact there, sitting on the sideline, as loud as I reckon I've ever heard. Where, he, and Ruan was there, a front rower. And I had a commando who was next to us as well, Damien Tomlinson. Yeah. And there was a couple where we just looked at each other and went, oh, my God. Like, it was next level. So the talking point out of it, apart from the overall result, was the Radley sin binning. I wanted to play the little grabber James Tedesco talking to the referee Adam G yesterday. Let's have a listen. Taps hard into the ground. And they want a penalty and they get one for a high shot. Oh, it's a head coach. Head coach. Just take him back. Just take him back. Use your head in the first half. Blake. Shoulder to the head. That's head to head. No. It's been reviewed. Shoulder to the head. It's also said he's rising on contact. If that was anyone else, it would be... No, we're not, going down, we're not going down that path. We're not going down that. Did they play the man and not the incident? No. I don't no. think so. Well, I hope not. Oh, I don't think so. I think they're under pressure these days a lot. I don't think it had anything to do with the fact it was Victor, but I think uh, they saw a bloke who was injured on the ground. It was heavy contact. And... in. Unless they've got another angle, which I know Robbo and that were talking about. Well, I'd like about. to know, if there's another angle which shows Victor yeah. hitting him with the shoulder with the head, they need to release As it. As so Graham Mannersley normally comes out with a uh, please explain. Yeah, so I'm not sure how that works given the game was on Tuesday, but I can tell yeah. you he's been charged grade one, careless. Lowest possible charge. Well, that which tells means you. he didn't hit him in the head he with his shoulder. Hit him in the head. If he did hit him in the head with the shoulder, given Radley's record, he's gone for four weeks. Yeah. Four to six weeks. And because at the end of the day, he was like... Michael Milo went straight off. Mm. He was gone. So you're right. I think they've agreed that. They may, they may have got it wrong. It'll be interesting when we hear the report come out. Now, you picked out a couple of clips from the Warriors and Storm game, which was a great game of footy as well. 12 nil to the Warriors. And Melbourne, it's they needed to game. pull out everything to come back and win that. Well, I thought, here's a penalty. If we see the high shot there, King's walking back, getting back on side, walks straight into the... New Zealand line. Freddie Lussie. And Freddie Lussie's just obstructed. But Freddie Lussie, that's just a penalty. Like how the, the referee was actually right in line with it. King gets in the line of the defence 
And then Freddie Lassie goes to go for Justin Ollum and would have got him. And then Justin Ollum runs 40 metres up the road and they score on the end of that six, set of six. There was a penalty in the Roosters-Dragons game early. Yeah, the same that, thing. That was, same a bad, that was a bad ruling. Can I, I don't want to be provocative here, but that, that's, that, that's something that you've picked up a little bit with Melbourne, isn't it? Standing in the line. That's even something some of the Queensland contingent have taken into origin. Oh, mate, absolutely. And, well, other teams do it as well. Like, you can see it's a tactic, but that, like, I mean, that was blatant. The fact he ran straight through the line, mm. you know, like, who gets a free run these days? Who, when was the last time you saw a player get a free run straight through? Huh. Doesn't happen. And the Remus Smith one? The Remus Smith, well, it just touches his hands. I was sitting there with Marie actually I last night and I asked Marie, who doesn't watch footy, I said, because Remus Smith's got brown tape on his hands and you see at some stage the brown tape touches it, it flicks on his fingers. Like they had a, that, that was and an easy also, observation. Like there's three coloured tape there. And oh, you can see it, it touches his hand for sure. I, I thought the same thing watching it. The, um, they had that super slow-mo camera. Yeah. Which showed it. Showed it clearly. And the guy, I hate the super slow motion, as everyone knows. I think we should look at it in real time. If it looks like a try, it's a try. But they're looking at it super slow motion, and it's a no try. I'll tell you what they're looking at the other one for. They gave it an extra set of six on that tackle where Harry Grant scored. And it was for, I think it was for lying down. And you'd have to um, find out if I'm wrong. But I thought it was such a harsh call. Two Kiwis went, two Kiwis. Two Warriors went in, made the tackle. It looked OK to me. And he gave him an extra set of six on the back of that tackle. And he's, so Harry Grant from, would have been kicking the ball, ran the ball and scored the try. I thought that was the harshest call. I'm not comparing Maria to this, but it just reminded me saying you were sitting there watching the game with Maria. Have you seen that ad for the bottle shop or the, um, the liquor retailer where the old non is sitting there on the couch? Nah. And watches the game. <laughs> Have you seen it? And she starts blowing up. Have you seen it? <laughs> no. Oh, you've got to see it. She starts talking in Greek and starts... Yeah, and all the all the, the grandkids are sitting there watching the footy and she starts going off a She's brain. Going mad. Oh, it's funny. You've got to look at it. Uh, question three. If Cameron Munster wins a comp for Melbourne this year or in the next few years, do you think he cements himself as one of the all-time greats? Mm. Yeah. Oh, he's a once-in-a-generation player. Yeah. He's, well, you think about it... The, he sort of come at the back end of, uh, you know, when did he play his first Origin? I was only thinking about that the other day. Well, he started on, on at the end of Billy and, and Cameron and Cooper and all that. Well, he was playing when I first started coaching, so was he there before that? So I was 18. He was playing before 18, yeah. I, yeah. I'll have to find out. But There's a couple of Origins where he was just like... Mm. 2000. There's a couple where they just couldn't... 2020, the last it, the, you know, game three. And then he kicked on play one or play, yeah. kicked across field. And it was just like, this bloke's on another planet. Did Chris, you, so, so answer the question, definitely. Yep. He still doesn't have to win a premiership. He's one of the greats now. Well, he's won. He's won a premiership. He's won a couple, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. Cohen Gregory asks, and I don't know that anyone could really answer this, will Ryan Pappenhausen have the change of pace that he used to have or will he have to slowly work back into that form that he used to be in? Now, I don't even know when he's coming back. I saw no, him in the coach's box. He'll be still rapid. He's still a young man. Been at all. Yeah. And it's, really a, it's, but, two years. it's But it's a patella. He right. fractured his patella. Yeah. I don't know. So it's not a torn. Yeah, but I, think, but I think it was an extreme. Okay. It was an extreme case because a lot of people crack their patella, it's your kneecap, and then mm. you sort of. I don't remember re recovery from them being 12 months or he's... You've got to remember, he missed. He's he into pretty much missed 12 months before that too. Like he's hardly played for two years. Yeah, me. That was from a knee rico. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think he'll be fine. And he's had the head knocks. Yeah, he'll still be quick. Mm. And to me, well, I think you'd have to actually see his scores like he's testing to see actually, and I'm sure they'll be looking at it, mm. uh, to see if he loses any pace. Boys, the big story, um, and this came out during the game, on Anzac Day, Danny Widler broke the news that Jack Whiten signed with South Sydney for next year. What was your immediate reaction to all of that? I wasn't surprised, actually. Mm. As soon as it sort of, there was talk that he was going to South and it got stronger and stronger. Look, he's very, very close to Luttrell and Cody. Um, also, same managers with the Rose Boys, they, they manage them all. He's also room with Cam Murray at, at stages. It's, uh, I think it's, it's good for South. I think it sh shows that a player who's had a long career 
Uh, he says he wants to win a grand final and he's chosen South. He had other teams he could he could have picked and I think uh, Canberra can win as well from the point of view of take advantage this year and say, well, mm. you know, one of our best players doesn't think we can win the comp. Why don't we try to prove him wrong? That's it's always to, a very strong motivator. It's hard to replace a test player, though. Yeah. A, a marquee 5'8". Well, I, I don't really know who's on the market. But well, they had him down from 1.1 million, so you get to pick a pretty good player. But who's off contract? You're saying who's off contract. Yeah, well, they might have to go far and wide, get to uh, England. Big raps on Johnny Lomax over there. OK. Mm. Big St Helens 5'8". Went good in the World Club Challenge. And they've got a great history of, of going to England, getting these players, Canberra. Mm -hmm. They might think outside. So what's he going to cost? What, is a, what does an English player cost that's unproven in Australia? Well, he'd, he'd probably... Well, he's one of the best players. Though. He'd probably looking at six, seven hundred, maybe more. Still got half a million up their sleeve there, too. He's a fullback, though, isn't he? No, he's 5'8". Is he? Right. I'm thinking... Of, who's the fullback? There's a highly regarded fullback. Yeah, the fullback's a gun. Uh, I don't know. Can't remember. Yeah. Where's he going to play? Is he going to play centre? Left centre. Left centre. OK. And then he could go into the back row. Yeah. Mm. So how many years did he sign, you know? Has it come out yet? Has it been confirmed? Um, oh, look, it, so it was four years with Canberra. I don't know. I think it's is it three years with South? I'm, I'm not sure. So you has it what? been confirmed? Pretty much. You can play Jack anywhere. Tough as they come. Wholehearted. Competes. Just launches everything into the game. MAD. MAD. It's fascinating too with South Sydney because we know how many, how many Mad preliminary Dan. finals they've made recently. Look, they've, they've been in the upper echelon of teams... For five or six years now, they got a red hot chance to win it this year. And this White year, comes to the club next year, so better, they've extended their their window. They're, if they're like. a better team this year than last year. Yeah. Some of the two young forwards, Davy Mawala, good player, who I've been rapping, mm. and Heme Sele. Jeez, he's been playing well, really well. They get to they've meet had, to back this week, and Sele's gone to the bench. They've had a lot of trouble with their middles. A lot of injuries through their middles. Liam Knight will be another one that will really strengthen he's, he's the middles up. He's back soon. Is there someone else? I feel like there's one more. Joy Arrow? He's been no, he's been back. Joy Arrow's just come out. He's gone good. But, mate, they, they won the other day without Kalal Matangi. Yeah. What did you say now about their back rows uh, during mm. our, our tips? Cheek Cam and, and Cheek Cam and Host. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, good opportunities from there. Because how long is Kalal Matangi out for? Another... Six weeks? Yeah. He did a wow. He's long a long-term. So your centres, you're saying, are Jack White and Campbell Graham. Yeah. Lethal. Handy pair. Well, they're internationals. Yeah. 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 I think they'll go very close this year. And then next year, as I said, they're going to be stronger next year. And then those young players will be a year older. Elias, a year older. Mm. Davey Moala, a year older. Kalal Matangi, a year older. <laughs> Is there a thinking? How old's Cody Walker, Brad? I think 32, 33. Mate, he'll, play, he'll play to his 36, 37. Well, I'm just wondering whether they're thinking Walker might only have one year left in him and then nah. Whiten plays 5-8 for nah. South. No, nah, no. Nah. Cody nah. will play to his 36, 37. He's doing it easy. He looks. Oh, he's, like Cliff, he's like Cliff Lyons. Still playing? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Cliff Lyons, what about Jared Ray Hargreaves' ball yesterday? The... Oh, yeah. <laughs> to Victor. <laughs> That's the yeah. best pass I've ever seen from nice a front row. Arthur Beats and Cliff Lyons were all wrapped into one. Great hole running. Stories of Origin, the podcast, which we launched last year. It's back for season two from May 1. You can get it where you get all of your podcasts. Let's have a little listen to uh, one of the episodes we've got coming up for you. Coming this May, Stories of Origin, the podcast returns. The legends of Australia's greatest sporting rivalry relive their most memorable Origin performances. Well, I knew it. I knew I had Billy cover. I remember. <laughs> so no, because you had ten minutes start <laughs> over twenty, <laughs> and I only had fifteen minutes to run. <laughs> but that was my favourite moment to turn around. I remember I just jumped up and turned around, just seeing their faces. Stories of Origin, the podcast, season two, available from Monday, May one, wherever you get your podcasts. Got some great episodes coming up in series two, all focused around memorable performances. Great to get Brad and Billy together to talk about 2004. And we launched the series with Sterlo and Fatty, who were talking about Origin in America. That famous game 87? in 1987, which is timely given all the talk about Las Vegas. Was that Sterlo running through the banner? Sterlo failing to run through what the banner. What do you banner. think of that game in Vegas? I think it's a good idea. Really? Do you yeah. think we can grow the game in America? What do you think uh, about going to Vegas for the footy, Andrew? I think... I think it's pie in the sky. I don't think we'll grow the game in America at all. I think it well, the only should way be can... used in the Pacific. 
take guns to the Pacific. Mm. Or in our own backyard. I was talking more from a lifestyle perspective. I, I, I'm totally... Bu- I'm never allowing myself to go to Vegas. Oh. What do I need to say? Why? No. <laughs> Vegas. Have you not been ever? No. International man of excess. Vegas. <laughs> International man of excess. <laughs> Vegas. Handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. no, police not, not police handcuffs. I think it's a good idea. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's just great promotion. Uh, regardless if, you, if you're going to get American players playing the game, I don't know, but you're going to get a better promotion doing that than going to play a game in Fiji. Mm. I've uh, just been told I've got some breaking news here on Freddie and the Ace. You've got breaking news. Peter Overton. Very much, fellas. Down here at Coogee Oval this morning, musical chairs, with Ian Roberts ruling himself out of the Origin game with that hamstring injury. Dean Pay is the big bolter. He's come off the bench and moves into the second row. So we have a new look pack. Paul Harrigan moves up to the front row with Ben Elias and Glenn Lazarus. Paul Sirenen and Dean Pay in the second row. Of course, Bradley Clyde remaining at lock, and that keeps the Canberra trio together of Clyde, Laurie Daly and Ricky Stewart. With me is a very, very happy Dean Pay. Dean, did you expect to be in the Origin game this morning? No, mate. I didn't know what was going on when uh, Ian pulled out. I thought they'd put uh, Clyde up in the second row, but uh, they're gone with me, so I'll have to pull it out, I suppose. Do you think you, uh, you've helped yourself this year with Terry Lamb's misfortune? You've been captain in Canterbury, it's lifted your profile and you've caught a few eyes? Yeah, well, the boys have been going pretty well, you know, on top of the comp and by four points, so we've been doing something right. There you have it, Dean Payne. Brad, any concern about the age of your team for this year's series opener? Mate, how good was that team? <laughs> how good was that team? What year was that? Uh, 94? Yeah, 94. wow. Geez, I can't tell you how good those origin years were through there. 92 to 94. Two great teams. We had a lot of fun. Peter Over. What a legend. What yeah. a pro. Even then. 94. How long ago was that? What's that? 30 years. Mm. 30 years. He's Look, a pro. Delicious hair still. Peter Over. Too great good, man. Pete. Too Another good. big fan of the show. Peter Over. Pete. Loves watching this show. Yeah. All right, let's get an update from Andrew Johns on his New South Wales origin team. Any movement, Andrew? No movement. A uh, bit of a worry around Turbo. I'm not allowed to touch the screen, am I? Turbo. And if Turbo's not there, Stephen Crichton may be coming to calculation. The guy I'm looking forward to watching this weekend is Rhys Robson. Mm. Around the dummy half. I think he's, he's thereabouts. But uh, other than that, Hudson Young's still there. It's good to see Angus back on the weekend. Still feeling his way back. But, uh, yeah, at the moment, this pretty much still stays. All right, Andrew, love you like a brother. I'm going to take you to task. And this is on behalf of most people watching Freddie and the Eighth. How can you not have Nico Hines in your origin team? Where are you going to play He's been the best player in the comp again this year. Oh, OK, where are you going to play him? Well, you play him in 14, don't you? Well, personally, I'd play him at 5'8". He's going that good. How don't you pick him? Well, because you pick combinations. I think Lou, uh, Jerome Luai has done it before. He's been under a bit of pressure this year. But I think the holy trilogy of Jerome, Nathan, Isaiah Yo, and then you can throw in Appy. They all know their games. Look, Origin's about combinations. And when the, you know, what hits the fan, you go back to... You can't even talk out there. So you go back to your combinations at club level. And look, for me, any Origin, you need two dummy halves. You need the yin and the yang. The dearest wing. They're the best teams I play with at origin level. But at the moment, I've got Jerome Luai in front, purely because of combinations. He's done it there before. And these two know each other's game and they know Isaiah's game. OK. Yeah. I put the question to you, you've answered it. Um, Campbell Graham? So you, you don't see him as a wing option. He's played international no. football as a winger. No, no, he's purely a centre. And look, if Tom's not there, Stephen Crichton... Campbell Graham, they go in. But these two pick himself. Mm. They haven't been there last year or the last couple of years. Well, the trail wasn't last year. In fact, neither were there last no, year. No, they? neither were there. Mm. But if there's anything that's happened to Tom on that right side, I think Campbell Graham and Stephen Crichton would be in the, uh, in the conversation. All right, what are you hearing about Turbo and his body at the moment? Uh, well, I think he's OK. I think all the reports are that it wasn't sort of any crucial part of the mechanics of his hips or his groins and um, slight tear, it's a slight tear in a muscle that doesn't really 
um, do much if there's so such a thing. So be interesting if he plays this week. I know he's named. Named, Small tear in the small abductor muscle. Well, it clearly does something because he could hardly get out of first gear on. Now on the abductor, you have three muscles, don't you? Uh, Well, all comes into that attachment point. How many ops do you have on your grind? I had I had a rupture and four others. Yeah, I had four operations. This is the Perth game, isn't it? Where he was just yeah. out of his world. It's three tries in the first half. Yeah. yeah. He bobbed up everywhere. Oh, he's a freakish player. So, uh, for the purposes of balance, next week on Freddie and the Eighth, we're going to ask someone from Camp Marone to put together their team. For Queensland, for Origin 1, it would be silly of us to ask these two. So we're going to go to our long black, uh, long list of names or our little black book for Queensland contacts and see if we can get them to put a, a Queensland team together as well. Question five from the audience. Is there anything the players do for recovery on days following games that you wish you had the opportunity to utilise when you were playing? No. It's <laughs> pretty much the same. We do... Swims, uh, ice baths, hot colds, stretch. We didn't do ice baths. I don't, I don't, ice baths. We used to do ice baths. They started. We used to swim at the beach or go to the pool at the stadium. Same thing. I'd go surfing. Flush it out. They, uh, I do like all, I've got a few of them actually. Some of the apparatuses they, they put on their legs and. Oh, they're the inflatable they ones. They feel they awesome. Do they? Yeah, they're unreal. So that's, that's one thing you would like to have had access you to. You see, like, when, when they're around, especially in Origin Camp, because there's time where you can just sit around, like they'd, mm. the boys are in them. Any sp- spare opportunity. They do that compression, yeah. squeeze and stop. And then there's the ones that have got the, the ice in them as well. So, mm. Mm. What happened to the, the chamber? What's the, the old ice? What was the old, is it the cryo? What's it cryotherapy, called? yeah. Still use that? Uh, we've had, we've, I don't know, we didn't have it in last year. I think we had it in a couple of years ago. The players like it. Yeah. Yeah, some love it. What was recovery like when you debuted in the late 80s? Well, oh, I don't think we went to training the next day. You'd go, no, it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. So if you played, normally you played Sunday. Or most of the games were on Sunday. So you'd, uh, obviously, you get on the drink Sunday. <laughs> That's what I was getting. And normally Monday. And then you train Tuesday night. Thursday night, Saturday morning. And Saturday morning there'd be a barbecue. That was that was training. That's so good. Blokes had to go to work Monday morning, didn't they? And actually, there was no weights originally when I first started. There was no weights. Mm. So Gus actually, when he came to Penrith the year after, he introduced weights. I think there was a couple of sessions. And, and even in those days, of course, people weren't used to doing them. You, you wouldn't do a full session. You just... slow me up. <laughs> I don't want to get too big. It'll slow me up. Well, we had uh, Luke Borogimi, who was the, actually, he was the Australian weights coach, weightlifting coach. That's right, yeah. So, man, at one stage, I was squatting like 200 kilo. Mm. I was like 18, 18 or 19. Yeah, well. Boys, eight weeks down, you gave us your uh, your top eights earlier in the, the season, or it might have been right at the start of the year. We're giving you a chance to promote and demote a team from your eight. So, uh, this? this is where we're at at the moment. I Oh, right. So, I, we, we get I to take a team out. Eight. I think I right. basled the Warriors. Mm. Murray, I'm just trying to... I basled the Dolphins. I'm a bit nervous about the Warriors. I think I did this before they played. Jeez, they wounded the Warriors. Do you think Manly would make the eight? Uh, after round one, I did. So, sorry, just to clarify, that that, that is the current top eight. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys can promote demote. or demote. I think we both current. said the Roosters. Both Roosters, roosters in now. Yeah. Okay. And war, uh, Warriors, Dolphins. Yeah. And I'm saying Dolphins. So we're in a situation here where you've got teams like Parramatta and the Cowboys who aren't in the eight. You're not elevating either of, either of those at this stage. Well, Parramatta. They've lost their... Regan's been their best front rower. Yeah. Wow. They lost five forwards last year. Grand finalists to missing the eight. That'd be huge, wouldn't it? Is that for this 10 week, weeks, Campbell? Huge Gillow? game this week, Newcastle. Yeah. Like, they need to win. Huge game. Massive. And Dolphins, what, what concerns you about them at this stage? I, I just keep waiting for them to fall over. Mm. And they haven't. 
The players they got out, Sean O'Sullivan, their, their halfback, he's gone for 16 weeks. As soon as he went, I thought, oh, they're gone. And then um, Anthony Milford went over, Felice Cafusi got suspended. They, I just, they just keep aiming up. I don't think they've had the hardest draw. I know the big win against the Roosters early. I don't know how many other uh, top eight teams they've beat. They got beat by Brisbane. They got beat by South. Uh, they got beat by. They play Penrith. No, they haven't played Penrith. No. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not like. sure how many of the other the top teams they've played. I'd have to go over my phone. So Milford's not far from coming back, is he? I, I reckon he was four weeks with a hamstring. He must phone. be next week. Jeez, that young Katoa was a good player. Man of the match. He got three points in the Dalian of the weekend. Really yeah. good player. Yeah, it's points. good to see. We've, as we know, we've seen a huge influx the last 20 years of Polynesian players coming in the game. But now we're starting to see halfbacks and five eights, yeah. mm. which has been, which will be the next. Evolution. That's what happens international footy. The Pacific, the Pacific international Pacific Cup at the end of every year will be unbelievable footy. Uh, starting to get halves who can steer the team around. Here we go. I'll go through. I'll the go game. through their draw. So they beat the Roosters. They beat the Raiders, who aren't in the top eight. They beat the Knights, who aren't in the top eight. Uh, they got beat by Brisbane. The Dragons beat them. They beat the Cowboys, who aren't in the top eight. They got beat by South. They beat, they beat the Titans, who aren't in the top eight. So they haven't played anyone. Yeah, okay. So they got Raiders, Cronulla, Storm, Dragons, Warriors, Manly, Para, Brisbane, Panthers. Roosters, Jeez, they got a um, tough draw. The, um, the video session wouldn't be nice for the Titans this week. In particular, their right side defence. Oh. Diabolical. Well, actually, the, asked, Roosters, the Roosters left side defence yeah. is awful. I asked Gus this in Six Tackles in the podcast I did before. Where, if you were coaching the Titans, where do you start after that? Man, on paper, they've got a good team. But after what they did on the weekend, like when you go in to start the week preparing, what do you do? How do you start that conversation? I was so gutted because I tipped the Dolphins. And like you see, the score was a 26 nil. Yep. 26 yeah. nil. I'm just thinking, I was that upset in myself <laughs> that I just, I'd got it so wrong. And they just collapsed. <laughs> As what? Johnny Gibbs used to say on the golf course, you're like a sayo in a blender. <laughs> it's crumbly. <laughs> I love Gibbo. Freddie's got a long history, of course, with the footy show. We love our footy show archives Ooh. here. And for some reason, we've pulled out something to do with him singing. Really? Well, I'm a driving down the road on the way to a show. I got seven problems on my mind. Four about my surfboard, two about the crossword, one my Freddy's photo files. Take it easy. Wow. That was good. Wow. That was really good. Whew. What was I thinking? You weren't thinking about much back then. Didn't have much to worry about. Obviously, that wasn't my voice. <laughs> Obviously. Boys, we mentioned last week about the couple of noteworthy occasions where you were run down uh, trying to score a try late in your career. Richardson. We've, we've gone back in the archives and we've found them. Just really? to embarrass you. Let's start with Freddie. All right. Freddie being hauled in. Here's the intercept. Go, Freddie. Look at me, how slow I am. <laughs> I pulled out oh. of it. I don't remember that. Then who got me? Paul Green. Green. Clinton Tchaikovsky was there. He was quick. He had you covered too, the number eight, didn't he? That's just like <laughs> Totally. <laughs> he left the ground. Don't leave the ground, mate. Don't leave the ground. Hip drop. And here's yours. Now, Matt Parsons got you. Mm. <laughs> he finished on top of you. <laughs> oh, you didn't exactly. Jeez, that was a uh, humbling experience when I scored that. Oh, Left and foot, you scored the try. Get tackled, and look where Parso ends up. Yeah. You didn't run you down. You scored the try. Well, that's all you need to do. You'd have to run over the dead ball line. That wasn't, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't quite as humiliating as I might have thought. That was half a hip drop. Was too. Yeah. Now, what's this about? You're going too quick, but nomination for the greatest falcon ever. Oh, this is Bedsy in this game. Bedsy oh. gets in the clear. Oh, <laughs> I balanced it on his head. Look at Bedsy, looks like an alien. <laughs> his eyes are too far apart. <laughs> it's like Kurt Gidley. Uh, on the head. No, 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 no. 
How good is that? Yes, Blubs. Very good. Great word, Blubsy. Viewer question, if footy didn't work out with you, what would you, what would you have done as a career? I would have been a coal miner. Is this an sure. option for you though, Joey? You, you do have experience in retail, I believe. <laughs> would you buy a pair of shoes off this man? Look at the head. Mr. Sports. I went to the sports store. That was a good job. So Gaz was a coal miner, was he? Yeah. And my grandfather. They are hard men, aren't they? Yeah. Dangerous, mm. dirty, hard, hard work. What was the greatest NRL team ever, excluding Origin and international teams? Well, that'd be an NRL team, then, wouldn't it? Canberra '94. They went to grand final that year by yep. forty odd or something. Yeah. Canberra. Brisbane '98. Gus always says that. Oh, that was the that was Thorn and all those. We're flying in '94. I think we won heap in a row. We just got into the top five. And we played Canberra at home and it was in front of 28,000. And they put 50 on us. That's when Mullow scored four tries. Mm. And I'd never seen anything like it. They we, were just... We played Brisbane in a semi up there. That might have been 99. And they did the same. Remember, Billy Peden did my rib. Yeah. We beat you in a semi at... Your joint, yeah. And then we had to play Brisbane. I made a rib cartilage. Oh, Billy Peden gave me. Oh, that hurt so much. Good work, Bill. And they beat us by forty. Uh. Brisbane. No, you can't dull the pain. Oh, of it's a rib cartilage. They jiggle. Can you? you can't. Mm. Ugh. I went to the hospital the night before to get tested with painkillers to see if it could make it feel better. That was no good. awful. Very brave. They smashed me. Is it time the NRL increased the number of players on the interchange? Or even removing the limit to a number of interchanges. So go back to unlimited no. interchange. No, I think it's perfect at it's the moment. It's a good, it's a good. The game could not be any better at the moment. I do think there's room for another player. I think with the HIAs and especially, they seem to be a little less particular at the moment or a little less pedantic, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I feel like there could be room for a decision around looking after HIAs because there's a few times I think the Warriors ended up with no interchange mm. and they had someone in the HIA at the time. So mm. if anything had to happen, they were down. You don't ever get to the stage where you're down to 12, I don't think. Well, Unless, of course, you've got someone suspended or simbid. Yep. Let's have a look at our games for round nine. 48 hours after Anzac Day, we're back into it. Cronulla versus North Queensland, live and free here on 9 from 7.30pm on Thursday. Don't think there's any real changes to either team. A critical game, of course, for North Queensland, mm. who, who did get, get the job done narrowly against Newcastle last week, but down in Cronulla, it's a different proposition. I think Cronulla win and win well. You can see the good players at Townsville. Will work, you know, really, they're working hard. It's not, it's not coming easy to them. I think Chad Townsend actually has to do more. Um, no doubt Malolo hurts, and even when he was here, he actually wasn't going as good as he was last year. So uh, at the moment, it's just hard. It's just hard work for him, and I just can't see him. Cronulla seem to do it easy. Mm. They move the ball so easy. And their defence is fragile. Oh, their, their attacks, Cronulla. See, Cronulla's left side defence has been fragile. Who's on their left? In uh, Moylan. In and around that area, and they need to improve that side. I love the Sharkies to watch. I mean, they, were, they, they splattered a bit against the Bulldogs on the weekend, but oh, they, 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 they're, mate, side. they're in third gear. Well, they get Wade Graham back. Uh, he's back this week. Did he play on the weekend? Did he? I think he did. Friday. He was back. Friday night footy. Broncos, Rabbits up at Suncorp. We're off to Magic Round. We'll get all the, all the games at Suncorp next round. Round. Ten. Are we, now, going, are we going up for Magic Round? I'm only doing Sunday. Payne Haas, Ezra Mam, Corey Oates, all gone. Yeah, I'm going the Bunnies. Yeah, Bunnies. What night's this on? Friday night footy. So as we know, there's a rain bomb coming from Sydney. Uh, you know I'd really like to check the weather. Thanks, Alan Wilkie. Uh, Friday night, clear, 25 during the day, 15 at night. So that suits the Bunnies. Ball movement. Jock Madden comes in and... Yeah. Keenan Palacia is starting, Palacia. I believe. Yep. Sunday footy, Dragons versus Canterbury. Kyle Flanagan has been dropped. Now, Josh Reynolds has been named in the six, but Carl Oluwapu, the young gun who they paid half a million dollars for, 
$7 they paid million Brisbane dollars. half a million the, dollars. The, that's right, the transfer, transfer fee. Yeah. Um, he's on an extended bench, and I understand he wasn't that far away from playing last week, so he may well come in. Now, Mate, the other the other young guy who I played lower grades, I haven't seen that much of him, or hardly him, was the young Lebanese guy, Caleb. Ka- yes. Caleb? Played in the World Cup. Yep. Jeez, yes. He's got something too. He looks like he's got something. Feisty. Tough. Good player. Yep. Quick, tough. How the Dragons back up from Anzac Day? I was thinking the same thing. They just got it. But that's tough. It's going to be a short turnaround. That's your job. I'm going the dogs. Mm. Here you go. You went Dragons, didn't you? No, I went Dragons. Dragons to it. Down there. Jeez, how physical, Sir George. They just back. Oh, God. When's Francis Molo back? He'd be back soon too, wouldn't he? Uh, Talk about physical. He's the one that rips in. Wow. I don't know if it's this week. Actually. It's not this week. It hasn't been named this week, I don't think. Um, regardless, it'll be a cracking game down there at Wollongong. Reminder, all of our digital shows, Six Tackles with Gus, Queenslander, the Billy Slater podcast, and, of course, the gentleman here, Freddie in the Eighth, which you can listen to as a podcast if you're driving home in the car or whatever it is you're doing. I like to listen to podcasts as I get around the house, do a bit of vacuuming, washing up. Doing the washing, of course you do. all that sort of stuff. I do. I'm yeah. very domesticated. Um, have you thought of any words of wisdom? No, I haven't. No. Something, ha- become... some, something happened to me today and I was just thinking, now what was it? I don't know what it was. I'll tell you what really pisses me off. <laughs> there's, two, there's two places in Sydney when I'm driving. When I'm driving across the Harbour Bridge and it's a 70 zone mm. and because you're going past the pillars, everyone goes 50. You know, you're getting home from work. Mm. You're just going, mate, could you hurry up? And the other one is Bondi Junction where you're driving on Sid Einfield Drive. Mm. It's 80 kilometres. It's not 60. And the the flips that stay Slow in drives. the right lane Slow and go 60, mm. they're the ones that should be booked. Mm. Given the cane. I mean, actually, here's a funny one for you. I'm driving to the ground on Sunday. Oh, no, Tuesday. I keep thinking Sunday. Yesterday, Anzac Day. So I'm talking to Fat. Fat rings me. So I'm on the Bluetooth talking. <laughs> next, next thing I get pulled over by the coppers. They got the breathalysers. Yeah. So the bloke comes over, he's candid, so mate, sorry, I'm just he goes, Oh, you're talking to Fatty, eh? He's going, There you go, Fatty. You go. Fatty goes, I said, mate, just let me count the breathalyzer. And he goes, mate, don't worry about breathalyzer, you get that thing on his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say the copper was a good sport. <laughs> Oh, very good. (laughs) Thank God he didn't. How'd the fact that he enjoyed his golf trip? Oh, he loved it. Loved it. Looking forward to hearing about it. Thanks, boys. I'll tell you what I was the other day. RBT. Oh! That, that one. It's a great Mate, we watch show. it with the kids. That's I'm, a sitting great there, show. I'm sitting there with the younger kids who are watching it. I reckon he's going to go positive, Dad. <laughs> Not for the drink when they get that thing out. Yeah. 100%. They've got, oh, the, they got the speed dealing sunnies on. They've got no teeth. <laughs> so good. Have you ever wondered if you have to yeah. sign something to give them permission to put you on that show? They would for sure. Because yeah, no, Why would you sign it? Well, they blur, so they blur people out every <laughs> now and then. Why would you sign it? A bloke got on the other day and he goes, have you had anything? He said, yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said, what have you had? He went, I've had met, I've had meth, I've had marijuana, <laughs> oh I had mushrooms, and he had something else. And they go, when? He goes, today. <laughs> he was laughing. Do it responsibly, kids. <laughs> Oh, this to mate. Of course you can. I love they pull up and they go, sir, have you been drinking? And he goes, nah. And they just chew oh. their face off. No. Oh, yes. Bind their own ears. Oh, right. Anyway, do it responsibly. Can we, can we have a different exit to the We'll show? run this by the legal department. See you later. <laughs>